right now. We are going to give everybody about a minute or two to get on the phone. We are so excited to have you on tonight. This is when the new life begins, empowerment call. We want everyone to know tonight that you are special, that God does indeed love you, and we are so excited to have you on. We're excited about the guests that we have on tonight, Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks. We thank God for what God is doing in her life. Tonight we want you to know that God has a purpose for your life like never before. Before everybody gets on, uh, we're giving them time. We want you to go to your Facebook Go to your Twitter, tell everybody, tell your friends, go to your phone, eat, uh, text everybody in your phone to please get on the call right now. Send them the number, retweet it, get on Facebook, uh, tell them, look at the flyer, give them the number because tonight a word is coming forth from God that we all need to hear, and Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks is going to impart to us like never before, and we're so thankful to God for it. So first of all, we want to tell you about When the New Life Begins book. Please go to Kiss Home, Inc. Again, Kiss Home, Inc., and look at the website. It will bless you. The book is only $12.95, and it is to build a foster home for young girls coming out and that need new starts. We've all had second chances, and God is giving them a second chance. So we want you to support the book, When New Life Begins book. Please go get it. Please go to Amazon. It will be in Delaware and our Walmarts like never before. We want you to get the book because it is to raise money for a foster home for young girls. And we want to see our children blessed. We want to see our children know that they are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath because they have a purpose, they have dreams, they have visions, and they are gifted like never before. So we want to set them on the right path. We want to point them in the right way. So please support the book. Again, go to the website, Kiss Home, Inc. You can uh, come on our Facebook walls, Kizma George, Trina Bowers. Uh, you can ask for prayer requests. We're taking all prayer requests. We will be praying for you tonight at the end of the call. Please go to our walls. You're very welcome to say whatever you need, comment, Tell us what you're feeling. Tell us what you're thinking after the call is over. We want you to prepare your hearts like never before to get ready to receive the prophet test of God. Christina Glenn Weeks, we are so excited. How are you, prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks? I am great. Thank you for asking, and I'm doing blessed and glad and hope that you are as well. Yes, yes, we are so honored to have you on. We want you to go ahead and tell us what God is doing in your life and then go ahead and impart to us like never before. Well, thank you so much. I know um, I want to send a quick shout-out to you. Um, no, um and what you, uh, Trina Bowers, and Keisha George are doing, and hope that others will support that as well. And thank you all for having me on as a guest tonight. Also, um, all of the listeners that are tuned in, um, I want to thank God for my husband. I want to thank God also that I have a special treat. My mother and father are tuned in tonight. Wow. So just, and, yes. So I'm glad that they're listening. Wonderful people, and I just thank God for them as well. So. And all that are tuned in, I um, was informed that um, you all wanted me to share tonight a little bit about what the Lord was saying for the year of 2013 and the yeah. blessings that he has in store for yeah. the people of God this year. And I believe the Lord spoke a brief thing to me in my spirit for the year of 2013, and that was this would be the year that God is going to super exceed all of your expectations. Lord. And when we think of that word super exceed and how, how we deal with that, everything that you thought that, that God was going to do for you, he's going to do it even greater than your own ma mind can imagine. Well, Lord. when we think about this, 
we think about something that is very interesting. And I said, mm-hmm. Lord, what do you mean or, or what, what, what's going on with the believers? And you, you shared that briefly, and I knew that was confirmation in what God was having me to speak about tonight briefly, was when you talked about earlier about we know everybody has a purpose. And I yeah. think so many times believers, we forget about the purpose that God has over our lives. Every believer, every believer has a God-assigned purpose over their life. And that's what has happened in 2013. Some people are already feeling the frustration of the enemy already Mm. trying to fight their purpose. And it brings us to one particular scripture before we leave out of here tonight and, and encouraging believers. In the book of Jeremiah, I think sometimes we say that scripture in Jeremiah 1 and 5, but we really don't take the time to process it out of what God is saying. When God told Jeremiah, when he was sharing that particular scripture, some of us can't figure out why we don't fit in. Oh, God, I just can't understand why some doors, even as of 2013, have not opened yet for me. Well, sometimes you can't fit in because you're, you're meant to stick out. And sometimes... When God wants you to stick out, you can't fit in everywhere. And that's what Jeremiah was like. When God said in that scripture, Jeremiah 1 and 5, he said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now, that's, a, that, 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 that's a, a major statement right there because a lot of times we want everybody else to know us, and they can't know us because God is the real one that knows us. He said it doesn't even matter what other people think about you when I know who you are. But this Mm. is the second thing it says. Before you were born, I set you apart. What does that mean? God on all of our lives, some of us have a call and a mandate. And that's why the enemy has been frustrating so many people in this year of 2013 already, and we're just a few days, and we're just a few weeks in, is because when there is a great mandate on your life, like there's a wow. mandate for you and Kishma to do this particular project. Yes. When, there is a, when there is a God assigned purpose over your life a, life, a mandate, the enemy tries to frustrate everything he can around you to hinder you from your destiny, to hinder mm. you from your purpose, to oh, hinder great. you from walking into the greatest yeah. season of your life. But what was so amazing is God said, I set you apart. And that's what many of us don't realize. God has already strategically set us apart. And it does not matter what the enemy tries to do because we have been set apart before we were born. He said, Mm. he told Jeremiah, I've already called you and appointed you to be a prophet to the nation. Well, everybody may not be a called to be a prophet to the nations, but everybody yes. in their own way has been assigned to greatness. And I need Whoa. people to hear that tonight. Everybody yeah. is not called to preach. Everybody is not called to prophesy. Everybody is not called to lay hands. But everybody that is listening to this call tonight has mm. been assigned to walk into a level of greatness. And that is what the enemy has been fighting over your life is the, is the greatness that God has assigned over your life while you were, while you were in your mother's womb. Yeah. Greatness is attacked at the beginning. And that's why, um, Trina, so many people that are listening tonight are saying, mm-hmm. but I'm already in 2013. I went to the New Year's Eve service. I shouted. I praised yeah. God. <laughs> you know, I praised mm-hmm. God. I, be, I, mm-hmm. I believe God that this was going to be my year, and yet I'm already frustrated, and I'm, and I'm only 28 days in. But this is, oh, the, this is one of the final thoughts that I want to I leave with people tonight and mm. before I, I turn this back over to you, is that this, perception is everything. How I perceive things is how I will interpret it through my faith, and that's what I will get back. Somebody says, well, what do you mean? Just like the Shunammite lady in the Bible, Glory. it was how she perceived Elisha, the, the the second one that had the mantle. We first had Elijah, then we had uh, we had Elisha with the double yes. portion of the anointing. Yes. And she said, "I perceive this man to be a holy man of God." 
Now, yeah. everybody else's perception in Shunem may not have been that he was a holy man of God, but her perception of him was that he was a holy man of God. Now, watch this, yeah. and, I, and I hope some people will catch this. Oh, because of ahead. her, praise God, because of her perception of him, when we look at this text and we, and we go a little further, and I'm not going to preach this text tonight, but I just want to share this. If you go further in the biblical text, it okay. says that after she, her perception of Elisha was that he was a man of God, she yeah. then went to her husband and desired to bless him. Now, I just said something key. Yeah. In this year, if we would change our perception about how we see things around us, Mm-hmm. and start saying, God, in the spite of what I feel, see, I've mm-hmm. lost and do not have, my perception is it's still good, and I'm going to still bless you regardless. Because oh, really? once my perception changes about my situation, my mm-hmm. outcome will change because a praise will build up in my spirit. I'll learn wow. to be like David and say, I yeah. will bless the Lord at yeah. all times. And I want to say this because I feel this strong in my spirit tonight, is that Jeremiah Mm. kept being fought on every hand. Even the scripture said, talked about how he had to even intercede on behalf of those that were fighting against him. I want to tell people in this season, in the scriptures it talks about they're going to fight you. But you keep staying in your position. You stay in your lane. You stay in the God, the the purpose that God has called you to. And I speak to every person listening to me tonight that feels like you want to give up, that feels like you're not winning anymore. God has already declared you the winner. And because you are a winner, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender, and you're not the borrower. This is our season. It's just our perception has to change. And when our perception, Trina, changes, everything around us, everything around us will change. And and we'll allow the Holy Ghost. When our perception changes, just what you and I just said, the Holy Ghost can move in because we remove negative thoughts. We remove negativity. We remove the spirit of doubt, the spirit of worry, the spirit of strife. All of that leaves when we allow God, when we allow the spirit of perception to change in our minds. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, you, you said some key points, and I, I, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that I have a call on my life but then I also have a mandate from God. When you said that, I've been thinking about mandates all week long. When God has man, could you explain to us the mandate of God? When God tells you you have no other choice, there's no getting around it, this is what I want, explain the mandate when people have to truly obey God. Well, but that, 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 that's exactly what Jeremiah had to do. See, some, some of us, I have, have a, such a mandate on our life. When you have that mandate, you can run from it, and you can try to run from it, but mm-hmm. it, because it has already been assigned over your life, it, it, it's just like your, your Social Security number. It is assigned yeah. to you. It mm-hmm. is how the world or the government and everything around you identifies you. When you are born, God gives us a, 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 an identification number that says yes. this is your God-assigned number. And mm-hmm. this number cannot identify with anyone else but you. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with some of us. We, we try to get in other lanes that we shouldn't be in. But the, and other people may try to come and be Trina. But they yeah. will never be you because mm. the mandate is not on their life. It's on your life. And until you fulfill what God has called you to do, then, yeah. then you will walk in the greatness. You will walk in another level of power. You will mm. walk in another level of glory. But glory. it's always, and, 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 I, and I can attest mm. to that, it's always those that 
I was in a, a place like that that really don't want to walk into it, that have to walk into it because God called you for it. And, and yeah. if you don't walk into it, you'll lose. And so I think that that, that is important to remember uh, about Jeremiah is that even yeah. when everything looks against you, the people mm-hmm. did not want to hear nothing he had to say, mm. but he had to still keep saying what God was speaking. Glory. And that's, and that's a rough thing to do when you got to mm. keep saying what God is. And even when people look like that were, coming, that, that were also prophets that were coming to say even against what he was saying, he yeah. still had to keep saying what God was saying. And that's what believers have to keep doing. Even though it doesn't look like, and everybody else is saying something different, you still got to keep saying what God is saying. You still got to keep saying what God is saying. And if you keep saying what God is saying, then you'll hmm. do what God has called you to do. Wow. You know, I, you, you're making me think about, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Jeremiah said, I don't want to speak God's name anymore. <laughs> and, he, and he said, and the mandate was so on him that there was no way he could even shut up because he had to say what God had to say. And it excites me because a lot of people, you know, don't understand the process and going through the process. You know, like they said, you see my glory, but you don't know the story behind it. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and I, I think in this hour, and I really want to speak because a lot of people, we have new believers, we have people that are seasoned, but I want to talk to the people that are walking or just coming into what God has for them. I don't care if it's business. I don't care if it's entrepreneurship, uh, greatness, government, schools. But you, you finally determine what your purpose is. How do we tell them to hold on? Because a lot of people are giving up so fast where they think if something comes against them, it's God doing it to them. When it's not God, it's the devil trying to frustrate their purpose. How do we encourage them to hold on? Well, the scripture is one simple scripture that, that, that I tell everybody. It's a, it's a simple passage, but we've got to get back to it. When that particular scripture in the text began to share with us in Romans 8.31, it says, what then shall we say to these things? That means that's everything. If God be for us, who Mm. Mm -mm. can be against us? And I think when we go back to operating under that scripture, if God be for us, because this is what the enemy's job is, we as Christians and believers, we forget what his job is. John 10 and 10, it says, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, Mm. and destroy. His job is to steal and kill and destroy everything that is Mm. that that God has for you. So if mm. that is taking place and you, and, and you get frustrated, your mm. mind also has to go to Jeremiah 29 and 11 when the yes. Bible says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you. Thank you, Say Jesus. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Well, what does that say? So many people, Trina, get caught up and what everybody else is saying around them. Oh, that's wow. I wouldn't see what you're going through. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they begin to speak against you or begin to speak against negative things. Well, guess what? When I begin to think about the fault that God has towards me, I don't have to worry about man's thoughts toward me when I realize that God has thoughts of good toward me and not of evil. Yeah. Then, yeah. it, then it puts me in a, it postures me in a place where I don't have to worry about what the enemy tells me or what other people may tell me because I go back to that scripture and I say, yeah. God has good thoughts about me. And this is what we're doing. When we learn, and this is what I've learned, uh, Sister Trina, is that yeah. when people stop learning to major in the minor things oh. and get your mind yeah. on the huh. things of God. So your yeah. mind got has to get so high in God that minor people that are sitting there like the people were doing with Nehemiah trying to get him off the wall, you got to stay. Yeah. That's what people got to make up in their mind this year. I got to mm-hmm. stay on my wall. Now, you may yeah. get off on the wall because you want to listen to everybody. 
that's talking crazy and not trying to be spiritual. But this yeah. year, I believe God has some great things for me. And because yeah. I believe that God has some great things for me, I'm going to stay on my wall and stay on my assignment. Glory to God. Now, this is big to me, the assignment. And, you know, a lot of times God, and, I, and I'm seeing it more and more uh, maybe this year because I, God is exciting people. Um, how, how do you feel about the assignment and kingdom connections or God bringing people into your life? You know, a lot of people think they could do it by themselves. Or how do we handle the assignment when it's connected to other people? Well, I, 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 I think... Um, this 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 is what I believe. Sometimes it doesn't take uh, so many of the right connections. It just takes that one right connection. And it's God um, putting the right people. And and I think that is another thing that people mm. struggle with because so so many times we live in a world now where people seem to be so uh, motivated of jealousy and and oh. motivated by. Uh, just just the wrong spirit. And yeah. it's hard for you notice people that start off being friends with people, six months later they're not friends with them. And yeah. I think we've lost a lot of genuineness in the body of Christ. And because mm-hmm. we've lost that uh, genuineness of true friendship, true, um, I, mm-hmm. I want to, not, not that I want to cover you when you're wrong, but I want to be there for you, be a friend to you, love you, and appreciate yeah. who you are in God. We have wow. lost that. So much, but I do believe, and I do yeah. believe this: whoever, it, whoever, and whatever God has to use for you to walk into, whatever place He wants you yeah. to walk into, if that person does not subject to be an obedient to bless you or open up a door for you, God has somebody that will, because His word, His mandate, His assignment will not go void because a person has a problem with you and doesn't want to bless you or use you. God always will touch the believers. And I want to say this because I always say this, and I like to get this out. Okay. Okay. And to women, especially since I'm talking on the call, I pray that women in this hour in the body of Christ will get a spirit to support each other. I I, I want the spirit of jealousy to be broken. Amen. And strife to be broken, broken because we so many times we we don't mm. want to support people because of jealousy, and, yeah. and and we don't want to see this person get further than 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 me. I don't want to see this person, mm-hmm. and when we don't realize, you will always hinder your blessing if you cannot mm-hmm. celebrate somebody else or push somebody yeah. in a place that may yeah. push them ahead of you. But yeah. what we don't realize is what who when you push somebody, Mm -hmm. or build somebody, in return, God builds you. Because guess what happens? I have have Bible for that. I don't say anything unless I have Bible to back it. And I want to say this when I said this, because somebody says, well, I've helped a lot of people. When is my time? Well, just like the late, the Shunammite lady, Mm -hmm. woman, she built that, she built a room for the prophet Elisha. She built a room for the prophet Elisha. She built it for him so that mm. he could come and stay there. And went, and the Bible said, and I, just to give it, I'm giving the fast version okay. of it, she was okay. without child. She was without child, did not, have a, did not have a child. And it wasn't because she couldn't get pregnant. The text said, because people sometimes read the text a little wrong, the text said she couldn't have, have a child because her husband was old. So it wasn't wow. the problem was in her. It was what she was connected to even though he was a good husband. Yeah. But, God, but God, what God did for her was this. The Bible yeah. says that he, the prophet, spoke a word that she would have a child. Yeah. Well, what do you think, for everybody that's listening, if she had already had a room for the prophet to stay in, she, would have, she could have already given him a room, but she built right. a room. She built the room to bless the prophet, but really that room wasn't for the prophet. It was really for her unborn son that she was getting ready to have. Because when she blessed the prophet, God was already blessing her. 
And that's what people don't realize. When you go to bless somebody else, God already in turn has a blessing for you. And I just want people to hear that tonight. And, whew, you know, I... I feel like throwing my shoes, <laughs> kicking off running, because, you know, I, uh, my prayer is that in the body of Christ, and my mother's a pastor, and I've been around churches, you know, lived the church life, and what I'm starting to see is that, you know what, we all have got to come together in unity. And, you know, in the the uh, jealousy and all the infighting, it's, it's really even no need for it because there's exactly. so, many people, it's so many people in this world that are hungering for God that everybody and their mama can have any type of ministry there is to have <laughs> to bless exactly. other people. And, you know, and, and it's just like there should not be any jealousy. There should not be any infighting or competition. And I pray That's right. that was so paramount for the body of Christ because we have got to learn to come together. And if uh, if I'm a minister, then that person that's under me should pass me if I really have the anointing of God. And you just talked about it, Elijah and Elisha. And, you know, uh, Elijah was the major, you know, major prophet, but when Elisha came along, he said, I want the double portion. He got double, and he did double the miracles. That's Hmm. right. It That's should why. be that we, we should be in, a, you know, the fathering, uh, uh, mothering, you know, uh, in the spirit that they should surpass us and we shouldn't get jealous of anybody because we have got to go get souls. Mm. So, and this is, a, this, this is a thing. So yeah. many people are having, so many Christians are having uh, identity crisis. But if you already yeah. know who you are in God and you know who yeah. your identity is, you will not have an identity crisis. And mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, know who you are in God. Know yeah. who, what God has called you to do. And when you know yeah. that, you'll walk mm-hmm. into the greatest season and yeah. the greatest days of your life with yeah. power and storming. You know, and it gives you a peace because no matter what comes against you, you can withstand it because you know what? God called me to it. You know what I mean? That's and God right. mandated for me to be here. And when you're comfortable in your skin and you start to get comfortable, then you know what? God can do great and mighty things because he knows I can trust you with what I'm getting ready to give you. And what you said today was God is going to exceed and super exceed a lot of people's expectations this year. And I really believe it. And I'm telling you, everyone that is on this line this is the year where you press through like never before. Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks has spoken a word to us that you know what? God can do it. God can blow your mind. All I'm telling you is keep your spirit of expectation up like never, ever before. Now, Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks, I want you to uh, answer this for the young prophets that are people are called to the prophetic office. Um, how do they grow in that? Because one of uh, the people that are my friends on Facebook asked me, how do I grow uh, in the prophetic office? Well, the, the, the truth thing is finding out, and I'm sure obviously they believe that they have been called into that office, is knowing that that is definitely the office that you've been called into. Some prophesy. And, and God has given a gift of prophecy, and then there is also the office of the prophet. And yeah. if they will truly believe that they have been called into, uh, and there's a mandate on their life to mm-hmm. be a prophet, uh, the best thing for them to do is to get around uh, seasoned uh, veteran prophets or a prophet that can mm-hmm. help uh, grow them into where they feel they need to be. And secondly, it, uh, being a prophet really takes a, an, it takes a lot of prayer. And yeah. people don't realize that uh, learning, to, and this would be one of the key things I always share when people say, what do I need to do? And of course, mm-hmm. there are several things you, could, you, you need to do. Um, but right. I would give them one key thing to do in growing, because um, we can't be on the call uh, a long time tonight, but I would yeah. share this with them. Learn to build a prayer life. 
And if you can learn to see, and, and, I, and I know that sounds simple to some people, but we have mm-hmm. a lot of Christians that go to church, but they don't have a prayer life. Yeah. And, when, and if you learn to build a true prayer life with God and that's your office that God has assigned for you to walk in, then you will find God speaking some things to you that only God can speak. You will hear this. You, your, it will cause your ear to, be, to become king because this is the thing. Secondly, I will say this. Real prophets don't have a lot of friends, and that's just the yeah. truth. Because, say it again. because <laughs> I'll say it again. Real prophets <laughs> don't have a lot of friends because they are peculiar and they are different. And, yeah. and, I, and I will say this. When Elijah, the first mm. Elijah, when God was calling him out to greatness, and I want everybody yeah. to hear this because this is, this is another thing that we go through. Yeah. Elijah went to Ahab and said, there shall not be rain or dew except by my word. Glory. When he told Ahab that there shall not be rain or dew except by my word, the prophet was speaking. But now because he was called in that office and spoke what God was saying, was spoke first yeah. what he said, God did what he said, but this is what happened. He went, the Bible says, and he told him to hide by the brook Cherith. Cherith for some people. Yeah. And what we don't understand is that when God put him there, he put him in a place of hiding. And he called yeah. one of the nastiest things, which was a raven, but ravens are nasty. But he mm-hmm. called one of the nastiest birds to come mm-hmm. and feed Elijah. Yeah. He put him in a place of hiding because while he was in that place of hiding, he was cutting, he was sharpening, he was preparing Elijah to be able to hear God's voice like never before. When you've really been called and assigned to walk in that place, God sure. will take you out, put you all by yourself. Mm. So because a lot of times when he's trying to teach you his voice, you can't have a lot of voices in your ear. Thank and you, that's you. what happens with a lot of people. We hear it. We got a lot of voices in our ear that are speaking things that God is not speaking. Glory. And we get up, and then we get up and say, "Thus saith the Lord." But mm-hmm. this is a year, not just for that person, but for everybody. <laughs> this has to be the year that you remove all voices that should not be in your life that are not Glory. either God assigned voices or God Himself. And that is how build a strong prayer life. And get in a place where God find only those that need to be in your life, be in your life, and pour into your life. Because when yeah. you are God's voice, when you speak for God, everybody Thanks. can speak to you. And I'm gonna say that again here. When you speak for God, yes. everybody can speak to you. Mm-mm-mm. I I feel like busting right now. <laughs> you uh, you truly have blessed us tonight. You blessed me tonight. I, I thank God for you. I'm only stopping because we've got to stop. But <laughs> I, I just want to tell you that everyone listening, uh, heed the words of the prophet of God that has spoken up to us tonight. Know that God is really doing something in your life that your steps have been ordered, and that God, even if you're on this call tonight, that God is going to do something so great in your life. We're about to close out in prayer. Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks is going to pray for us. Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks, I just want to tell you thank you, and I honor you as a prophet of God like never before. And I thank God for the gift, for the grace that he's placed over your life, and thank you for imparting to us tonight. It's a blessing. So many people, they're on my Facebook. Everything is popping up in my phone right now. <laughs> so people, people are being truly, truly blessed. Um, I thank God for you. I, I could talk to you all night long because, you know, I believe in, in this hour that God needs people that can impart to people because so many people, you know, uh, I don't know where the scripture is, but it says uh, we have not many fathers. We have a lot of teachers, but not many fathers. And the body Mm -hmm. of Christ needs to come back and be taught again. They need to be imparted to again because we're so busy, we're so on a rush, and nobody wants to take the time. 
to teach people how to be what they need to be in God. So tonight, I just want to say I honor you for even taking time to impart to us because it's truly, you confirmed so much for me that I'm about ready to run. (laughs) So please have your last words and then close us out in prayer. Well, thank you so much again, um, Sister Trina. Again, it was an honor to be with you and Sister Kishma tonight. Again, I want everyone um, that shared, that listened tonight and heard about their project, please continue to support that. I also just want to share with everyone tonight, this is the year. And mm-hmm. you can retweet this, Facebook yes. it, text it to everybody. Yes. I want everyone that's listening tonight, as she said, get on your Twitter, get on your Facebook. Don't allow, don't listen, to, do not hear this word tonight and not let it change you or empower you tonight. You yes. need to let people know this is the year God is going to super exceed all of my expectations by my faith. I believe that it's already done. And that's why I always say those words. It's already done. We're getting ready to pray. I know you already released uh, your Twitter, those tonight um, um, that want to come. Please go visit my website, www.ChristinaGlennWeeks.com. Again, that's www.ChristinaGlennWeeks.com. I'm also on Facebook at Prophetess Christina Glenn, also at Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks, and on Twitter at PCGW Ministries. Again, on Twitter at PCGW Ministries. And I want to see people tonight, like you said, Sister Kishma, let people hit you up tonight on Twitter, on Facebook. Also, feel free to come over to PCGW Ministries. Let us know that this word has blessed you tonight. We're getting ready to pray. I want everybody Whatever it is that you need God to do, we're going to take a couple of minutes to go to the throne room tonight of mercy and let us touch heaven tonight. Father, we thank you. We give you praise tonight as we lift our hands in a place of worship. We thank you tonight before this conference call that you have designed and given by Trina Bowers and Kishma George. We thank you, God, for the anointing that you have placed on both of their lives. As I speak tonight, I decree and declare by faith that you would allow the anointing to fall on both of their lives like never before. And God, favor, an uncommon favor would hit their lives for this project of wealth to come forth like never before. Father, I thank you for every believer right now that is listening to my voice. I thank you that I decree and declare that favor will hit them wherever they are. In their living rooms, I decree favor. In their bathrooms, I decree favor. In their cars, I decree favor. I decree favor from the crown of their heads down to the sole of their very feet. In the name of Jesus tonight, I bind every stronghold that has tried to come up and bind their minds, the spirit of depression and oppression. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. I cast down every strong spirit, every high imagination that exalted itself against the power of God. And I thank you tonight that when I close this prayer, that people tonight will start rejoicing like never before, because tonight we walk under that scripture that says no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. What the enemy meant for our bad, God is turning it around for our good. Tonight I release the Holy Ghost power to infiltrate people's minds, homes, and children. Thank you right now for family members being saved that are unsaved. Thank you right now for debt cancellation. Thank you right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, for only the release of the anointing that God, I thank you, that sometimes we don't pray for the anointing, God, but God who said is only the anointing that can destroy every year. I release the anointing right now. The anointing of increase, the anointing of favor, the anointing of healing, that, Father, it will flow like rivers, flow like rivers over people's lives. And I thank you that Keishma George and Trina Bowers 
will start receiving praise reports Look. because I speak as a prophet tonight that within the next 48 hours that people mm-hmm. will begin to see breakthroughs like never before. They will begin to see a release of favor in unexpected places that they never thought that they would walk into or have. The blessing of the unexpected is happening right now. I speak it and I decree it by faith. In Jesus' name, it's already done. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We receive it in the name of Jesus, Prophetess Christina Glenn Weeks. I'm telling you, everybody, go to her Twitter, go to Facebook. Please follow her. Please friend her. Please like her page. She is a true prophetess of God, and I thank God for you being on tonight. Tonight, everyone, I just want you to be blessed. Know that you are loved. Know that you're getting ready to walk in victory. Know that God is going to super exceed every expectation that you had in 2013. Do not give up. Do not quit. Do not back up. God is for you like never before, and we love you. We want you to have a blessed Bless night. Don't stop praying. Pray even more and watch God answer your prayer. We love you so much. You are loved by our God. God bless you and good night.